and how to handle small arms are two essentials for the regular soldier, no matter what job he will eventually do. A third is how to look after himself in the jungle. Rifle group, we all go right flanking. Prepare to move. Follow me. Mounts. Bullets. trained troops of the regular army are the special air service, the SAS. As paratroopers, they're the shock troops. Men of the SAS are selected from serving soldiers. All soldiers have to be fit. The SAS have to be tough. Tough to move over rugged country and versatile and resourceful to cope with the many jobs they're asked to do. When a man signs on with the regular army, he does so for a minimum term of three to five years. But these terms can always be extended. Many serve till retiring age. These men have to be specialists too in unarmed combat. After basic training, members of the different corps specialize in the use of their unit equipment. Good gunnery calls on the skills of at least seven specialists. In learning the operation of transmitters, signalers receive a good grounding in the use of all radio equipment. The training received here is valuable for men who later want to take up radio work in civilian life. If you're army trained, you're well trained. Construction tasks fall to the engineers, and in the army, carpenters are engineers. As in every corps, tradesmen receive thorough training in all aspects of their work, and whether a man elects to make the army his career or return to Civvy Street, he'll have his training for all time. A man's ability as a tradesman in the army is recognized by the award of stars for proficiency. Stars entitled him to pay increases, and these, together with normal promotion through the ranks, mean that a man receives practical rewards for his skill. Nine inches up from the bottom, you feel your first hinge. You're nine inches up. You set your first hinge up from there. Houses for the use of married soldiers. In building houses, the army not only provides good accommodation, but also widens the experience and increases the skill of all the tradesmen involved. Houses or airstrips, you name it, and the engineers will build it. At Wayuru, they give the camp a much needed runway. What a man does in the army, whether a man be infantryman or engineer, depends partly on his ability partly on his choice. The army tries to give a man the job he's best suited for. The 
For the Armoured Corps is the responsibility of operating and maintaining tanks. Based at Waiuru is the School of Armour and the 1st Armoured Squadron with Centurion and M41 tanks. That's the idea. A mock-up of a tank turret is for teaching the fundamentals of tank gunnery. Every tank has a radio operator and the skill of operators is vital to the effectiveness and control of a tank squadron. Down to cursor dust. In today's army, radio is the thread that links it together. Every corps has its own radio section for internal communication, but it's the job of the signal corps to link up all the corps. Oh, one for two signals, over. Roger out. Hub of Army Communications is the communications centre at Army Headquarters, operated by the Signal Corps. Here, by teleprinter, signals are relayed from headquarters to commands at home and overseas. In this and similar work, women of the New Zealand Women's Royal Army Corps, the RACs, are able to relieve men for the more strenuous combat duties. The Army gains a lot by having some of its duties performed with a feminine touch. In the Medical Corps, there's the satisfaction of being able to help your fellow men, of relieving pain and helping sick men get well. Dip it in your water. And see if it covers the length of the arm from the back of the knuckle to the elbow. Right, apply your bandage now and roll it out towards the outside. I think starting over the area of the fracture and carry on forwards. With free dental service provided by the Dental Corps, there's no worry about dentist bills in the army and every man and woman receives first-class attention. It used to be said an army marches on its stomach. In these mechanized days, there's not much marching, but soldiers still have to be well fed. Providing the food is one of the major tasks of the Army Service Corps. The service corps also looks after the cooking and trains its chefs to top-notch standard. A man who learns his cooking in the army can match his skill with any in civilian life. That's the idea. A little more. Sometimes a soldier has to feed himself, and knowing how to do it is essential for survival in jungle warfare. Knowing how to smoke fish can make the difference between a full stomach and an empty one. For a delicacy, try a hoo-hoo grub. But survival in the jungle depends on more than finding food. It depends on ability to live in it. The New Zealand bush is a good training ground, for it's a lot like the jungles of Southeast Asia. Field exercises give the Medical Corps experience in bringing out a wounded man under service conditions. And a lot of it is plain hard slogging.
nurses have always brought comfort to wounded soldiers. Men of the peacetime army receive from them the traditional care and attention. Yes, yes, they are unable. Whether it's sick men or sick engines, the army mends them. Specialists in the repair field are the Royal Corps of Electrical and Mechanical Engineers. Though all corps carry out routine maintenance, when it comes to a major overhaul, it's a job for RNZ EME. They're also specialists in radio, and their mobile radio workshop is fully equipped to handle all types of radio maintenance. A special screen compartment, which is insulated from outside radio interference, enables them to undertake delicate repairs in the field. Men of the Ordnance Corps become experts in explosives. And is used to push the containers from the body of the shell. Expert knowledge is necessary when out-of-date ammunition has to be destroyed. An organization as big and complex as the army is in constant need of stores and spare parts. The Ordnance Corps is responsible for their handling and issue. Supply dropping to troops in the field is a combined exercise for Air Force and Army. Army's part is looked after by Army Service Corps, who pack and load the containers. Ground troops signal their position with a smoke bomb. Only by airdrops is it possible to supply troops in the roadless jungles. The dispatch is done by a special detachment of the Army Service Corps, trained for the job. If road can be used, the ASC delivers the goods by truck. Field exercises are about to begin, and here petrol and ammunition are being moved forward to dumps. For the exercises, the artillery brings up their 105 mm pack howitzers. These versatile, lightweight guns can be quickly manhandled into position and, with good teamwork, assembled in short time. The command post, which coordinates and directs the firing of the guns, is set up at the gun line. The guns are laid. The basis of good gunnery is speed of fire, and New Zealanders excel in this. The infantry check their weapons. Listen in. Tanks the take on shells and petrol. The are holding a road junction about here. And the squadron has been given a platoon to take it out. Our mission is to destroy this enemy position located here so the brigade can continue its advance. 
Execution. General outline. It'd be a left flanking attack from this direction by the infantry, supported by the tanks from this direction. Section target. Over. Infantry gives support with three inch mortars. The enemy positions having been softened up by the artillery, the infantry advance. The infantry are pinned down and call up the tanks. One, one, four, tango, one, one. Target, over. Tango, one, one, uh, target, over. One, one, uh, reference tank. Go right, 50, burnt out, perfect. Enemy machine gun. Carrying out of these exercises not only welds the different branches of the regular army into an efficient fighting force, but it also gives variety and a sense of purpose for the men taking part. All this training gets its practical use with overseas service. The regular soldier in the New Zealand Army has been using it to good effect in Southeast Asia since 1955. novelty in serving in strange countries and at the same time the satisfaction of a job well done. Many men have volunteered for a second tour of duty overseas, some for a third. Today's soldier serves in a very different army from soldiers of yesterday. He's no longer asked for blind discipline, but is expected to show initiative and, with more complicated weapons, to be more of a specialist. Taking it all in all, the regular soldier of today leads a pretty good life, but he carries a great responsibility, the responsibility for the defense and security of his country.